Okay, well, I'll at least get started with a little bit of a, a few announcements while we're, we're waiting for more people and bringing them in. This is the second networking event that we've done as a brand new community. I did a couple of speeches last month, which was great, but it was just, they were speeches and they weren't the same as uh, getting everybody together. And if any of you saw those speeches, I was promoting networking as the single best way to create opportunities for warm introductions to the right people so that we can really make things happen. So I've switched to this type of a style event because I truly believe this is what everybody needs, more connections in the ecosystem of the startup community. Pitching total strangers is something that, you know, we've been doing for years as startups, but those warm introductions are absolutely golden if they're done in the right way. The success of this community is all about you guys. Like I can manifest a community. And as you can see, I have a very large network. And um, tonight we had over 350 people register. I'm not sure how many will actually attend. Many will, like the last event, watch the replay. But, um, you know, getting 300 plus people that want to attend on a Wednesday night is just amazing to me. And we're just getting started. And I did solve the problem we had last week. And I apologize to many of you who tried to get in, but I didn't know that there was a way of paying Zoom extra money in order to expand from 100 people who can um, be participating in our event to 500 so that it was possible for us to register more people. Last week, we had over 300 people that had, a, had registered in LinkedIn and then only 100 could register through Zoom. So we had a total bottleneck and I, I've learned a lot of lessons and now we're, you know, we're set up for larger events. So thank you all. Um, we've achieved some actually great results so far as a brand new community. We have over 1,150 followers to our LinkedIn page. If you haven't been to the Venture Starters, LinkedIn page, please find it. It's in the chat. There's a link there. Um, follow it because that's where we're going to basically make a lot of announcements and it'll be easier for you to, you know, find out at least through LinkedIn what we're doing and when we're having events. We also have had amazingly over 1,600 people. Uh, I think they're unique people. I have to double check that who have actually signed up for the five events that we've uh, done in the last five weeks since we launched, um, we launched this community. So demand is high. Getting everybody together on the same night may not be as easy, but I've picked Wednesday nights as the night that we're gonna do this. And I hope that works for everybody. We may have some very uh, specific themed events that we'll do on Saturdays. I tested that out with a life science themed event last month that worked out really good. So we're gonna try another life science event next month. I also wanna do a climate technology uh, event probably next month as well. I have a co-founder, uh, a co-sponsor for that one that I'm really excited about. And hopefully you'll meet at m many of these events. She's amazing. Um, and then we're also going to possibly do a Web3 uh, focused event and maybe some other um, specific areas where it makes sense for us to sort of take our really large growing community and divide them into specific sectors so that we can get a little bit more accomplished. Tonight, like last night, I'm going to do the same type of thing where I'm going to try and get everybody who wants to speak two minutes on the center stage to tell us about what they're doing, either as a startup, as an investor, or service provider. Um, we only have a, two hours. I'd like the event not to last too much longer than that. Um, so we'll try and get in as many people as possible. This is an elevator pitch type of an event where we're all just trying to get to know who each other is so that we can see each other a number of times and start to understand if there's opportunities for us to add value to somebody's startup or um, for investors like me to spot the diamonds and the rough that we're looking for 
and, you know, reach out then to those people directly, um, you know, through chat or separately from this event. Um, size matters, in my opinion. If any of you who know me and have been involved in my orbit for the last four or five years, you've probably heard me say this before, but I have found that size matters. I had a theory that I've proven out that actually works. I used to call the theory one in 100. And now that I know it's uh, proven, I don't think I should be calling it a theory anymore because I've used it to help over 30 startups. And this all started because at some point, um, I remember a, a founder saying that he had raised money because he had pitched 100 VCs. And he was also happy to tell us that he had raised money and pitched all those VCs. And I was thinking, well, how much time is it going to take to basically pitch all those VCs? So wouldn't it make more sense to go and find one person, you know, who knew VCs personally? And if I could attract 100 people, there'd be one in 100 who would be the perfect person to put into a startup, add to a startup team, who knew the VC that we needed for that particular project, wouldn't that be easier, faster, simpler? So I started to play around with that by advertising on LinkedIn to find you know, the amazing talent that exists in my network. And sure enough, time and time again, we were able to find people who would join startups, not for salaries, but for equity or for back-end compensation to basically join the startup because they knew people. They had the right family and friends network that could then be added to the existing founders teams of family and friends. So you weren't out pitching total strangers. You were pitching, you know, somebody through a warm introduction. And it, it's worked. And we've raised lots of money this way. And we've had lots of success doing it this way. So I happen to provide this service to many startups. We usually start at a $10,000 advertising budget to go and find the right people to make the magic happen. Not a lot of startups can afford 10,000 or more. And that's why I'm creating these free events. It's a little bit slower in networking than the way that I do it, which is way more accelerated on like steroids. And those of you who've been involved with me know how fast it works. But in this particular case, these events are free, everybody can afford it. Plus we need a community event anyways. There's just too many people to meet, to get good ideas, to hear from. And um, I appreciate that all of you are here uh, spending uh, time on your Wednesday night with me and with everybody else. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I also want to uh, introduce and just mention that two people co-sponsored this event tonight, and I would like 25 of you to do it in the future. So please volunteer. The two co-sponsors are Hugh Seth and Al Brzezinski. Both of these gentlemen were so kind. Turns out that LinkedIn allows every single one of you to invite up to 1,000 of your first connections to an event that you're attending. So if you're if you'd like to be recognized as a co-sponsor and help us grow our, our community, when you see that event announcement after you've clicked on LinkedIn that you're going to attend, if you would like to then click the box that then replaces where you click, it says invite, and it'll immediately take you to a page of all of your connections, and you can click boxes as to who you'd like to invite. You can, like I said, a thousand people per week, you are allowed. LinkedIn wants you to do this to grow more activity within the LinkedIn system. So if you would like to do this exercise, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll be helping us grow our community because my network is amazing, but your networks combined with my networks are even way more amazing. So if you can help me help us all out, that would be appreciated. Just let me know that you've actually invited people so I can recognize you. The rules for tonight are the same as last night. Very simple. Be nice. Okay, investors, you can ask questions after the two-minute pitches that, you know, many people are going to make tonight that are going to be like an elevator pitch. But 
softball, just screening pitches, not hard, detailed uh, questions, because we need to be able to filter through as many people as possible. I might ask some quest follow up, up questions, but I do want to kind of keep things moving as much as we can, because we have so many people who are coming tonight that I happen to know want to, to uh, speak. Um, for those that spoke in the uh, last week, please let the ones that have not spoken yet get the first shots at speaking. We're going to do the hand raise again through the reaction part of the Zoom. If you look in the bottom, there's this reaction uh, button that you can click and then you can raise your hands. And as you raise your hands, then Zoom will basically like filter them into me. And I'm just going to invite people up in the order that they actually had raised their hands or that they're on my screen, I should say. And I'll try and get to everybody. And I'm sorry for some of you who might want to speak tonight that may not get the time to because we have so we're almost up to 100 people in the room right now. And people are going to be coming and going for the next two hours. Those of you need the, to leave for a few minutes to go to the restroom or have dinner, completely understand. You're welcome to come in, come back. If you want to have a drink of a beer or wine while this is going on, I completely understand. Enjoy, kick back. I know a number of the investors that are in the room are not going to show their face and they're just here to look and see if there's something that they like and they will reach out. Last week, we had one of the investors get very excited about one of the startups that pitched. I spoke with that investor. He was not visible to everybody, but he did reach out after the event and there's something going on. I hope we'll be able to announce something major did happen in that event. And there, there may even be other connections that happened last week that will lead to very good outcomes. So I hope to start to be able to announce those as they happen. Um, if the, comp if the uh, folks that had uh, pitched last week will just wait 15 or 20 minutes before you start to raise your hand, I just appreciate it so we can try and get everybody who's new in so we can start to see who is who. And let's see if there's any other notes I have. Um, just please follow. Oh, I would like to um, tell you about Startup Right. I'm not sure if Nick is here or Luke. but Yeah, here, here, here. Where are you, Nick? Yeah, I'm uh, Luke. Uh, Luke is here. Oh, Luke is here. Do you want to yeah. talk about startup, right? Yeah, I can. I can say a few words, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so basically, startup right is a project uh, that has been started by Nick Kolev, and I have joined about like two years now, year and a half, or a bit more. Uh, and the project is uh, mainly oriented around. Uh, uh, connecting uh, startups and relevant ideas, great ideas to uh, capital. Uh, and we had about like, I think about 10 or even more events, 12 events, uh, which are uh, mainly like pitch events where great startups, great uh, founders pitch their ideas to uh, great investors like our host today, Mark November. Uh, and we host those events like Two times of uh, two times per month, uh, and uh, basically this is a great way for startups to present their ideas in front of uh, a panel of investors. I'll actually share more details in our chat chat um, uh, chat chat room today. So I think that uh, it's a great uh, way for startups to share their ideas, to share their uh, like. To share the status and actually to connect with uh, uh, with the community of investors and a panel of investors that is already how to say already been to the to to those events like for uh, like a long time like two years. So uh, I will share more about those events and uh, what we do in the chat uh, in the chat here. So I so I think that. Uh, Whomever, whoever wants to join us and to see what we do, it, uh, I think that uh, uh, it, it will be very helpful for them. Thank you. It's a great event. And if you're looking to yeah. pitch, uh, pitch your company to a, a panel of investors with slides, it's a yeah. five-minute pitch, and then there's five minutes for Q&A. And we hold uh, a start, we do a startup right event every other Thursday. 
I yeah. highly recommend it. It's especially good for practicing in front of inve friendly investors. And yeah. I've actually invested in uh, companies that have pitched at that event. So it's it's a real event worthy of, of uh, attending. And we have some great investors on yeah. the panel and we might even have some of them attend tonight. So, yeah, okay. and not only this, so, sorry for interrupting, Mark. I want to yeah. also share that uh, it's not only this, it's also uh, that we uh, do like uh, warm introductions, uh, something something similar to what we are doing today, but uh, a little bit more like packaged in a promotional package that basically Startup Bright is creating uh, for founders. Uh, we basically do interviews for those founders and we create uh, an online profile of those companies and we do uh, warm intros to our network of investors which is constantly growing we have a large network of, of more than 200 investors uh, and uh, some of them are uh, like some some of them are already like in, on this event and uh, basically it what it does it it's it uh, it packages the information about the company and presents it uh, in front of uh, those investors in a warm, a warm way. So yeah, in general, this is what Start Startup Right does. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate Welcome. all that. Perfect. Okay, so let's just dive in because instead yeah. of listening to me, let's listen to our amazingly gifted and talented um, startup founders who are here tonight. So the first person on my list is amazingly Sheldon, who I spoke with earlier today. And um, I, what I would say about Sheldon is he's uh, probably as smart as Sheldon Cooper on the TV show. Um, and he's really doing something that I think is absolutely remarkable and amazing. And I hope for at least the investors who are in the room, listen carefully to what Sheldon is doing because this is really totally neat stuff. Sheldon, please unmute. Oh, you're already unmuted. It's your, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark, for one introduction. So uh, I'm the founder of Fanta Field in the Fanta State. Uh, I will put my information also on, on, in a chat. So we uh, Fanta Field is a sales mode uh, co company we are making uh, an AI display solution where we integrate micro LED and orthogonal light field micro lens into a piece of lens and uh, with our, our uh, proprietary 2D semiconductor. And uh, we are able to create 100 degree field of view and uh, retina resolution display. And uh, by the end of the day, we are trying to integrate as many components in the lens itself so that the glass itself can be uh, super light and uh, not, not depending too much on components on the frame. And uh, I, I also created this Web3 project, Fanta Space, under the vision of the future where everyone can wear AR glasses. It's a Earth-scale mixed reality met metaverse uh, where you, you, it functions as a 3D NFT gallery and a marketplace. And right now you can place your NFT on your wallet on our map for free. And that we are ho holding a private token sale at a, a link called Phantom AYZ. And uh, uh, feel free to connect me to, to, through the linking. Thank you. And so the, the, the 2D semiconductor is, is such a game changer. And the applications, the more you talk to Sheldon, the more excited you'll be. He's really amazingly interesting. So thank you, Sheldon. Okay, thank next, you. next up um, is Oliver Siegel. Hi, Oliver. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Mark. Really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, just want to real quick share what we're working on with Enolv. It's the world's only problem solution directory. That means it's a place where you can publish your solution and you can connect it to the problems that were reported by other users. So this way we can kind of streamline the whole process of finding the right solutions that help you meet your value goals and your, you know, the things you care about quickly and easily. And that's what the platform we're building. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is uh, Bomadel. Sure. I, I'm terrible with names, everybody. So if I mispronounce anybody's names, it's not intentional. I apologize. 
<laughs> Don't worry, it only took me 10 years to learn how to pronounce that name, Mark. Um, my name is Bami Deli Ali. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of our small company, ISPS. Um, we have created the first wearable high flow rate oxygen concentrator for people who suffer from COPD and other respiratory conditions. And here's why. Look, I've been in healthcare the majority of my life, designing medical equipment for GE Healthcare, running various P&Ls, studying cancer and heart disease, but I didn't know that a person dies every four minutes from COPD. It's the fourth leading cause of death. I won't say, and I cannot say that our device will stop people from dying from COPD, but we do know that quality of care and lifestyle are the two biggest um, contributors to how long you live after you've been diagnosed with something. The products on the market today don't put out enough oxygen. We have created a device that you can actually wear. Oh, and it's also got a built-in UV component that kills airborne pathogens. So we are going to change the standard of care for people who suffer from respiratory conditions and change their quality of life. So these people aren't homebound, they can go to a park, they can go for a walk. Technologies on the market today are just too heavy and not ergonomic. Mm -hmm. We've done, we have a prototype of the unit, so we're raising funds in the seed round to get through FDA certification. Okay, that's fascinating. So it, uh, just out of curiosity, is there is this less expensive than the products that are on the market now, or is it de delivering something more better to the patient? I wasn't clear why you're, what's your value proposition? Yeah, the value proposition is that the devices that are out today put out about two liters of pure oxygen per minute. If you're diagnosed with severe emphysema, you could need four to five liters of, of oxygen, which means that you're a homebound now. You cannot well use a mobile device. You can't travel to see loved ones. So we create a level of mobility by giving that high oxygen concentrator to a wearable device that you can now go out, you can travel, you can do things. That's a change in quality of life. And you can actually breathe now without wheezing. And you can do some of the things that you wanted to do before. That changes everything for these patients. Nice. We do have some uh, life science folks in the room. And, um, you know, certainly I hope June Lee, you're listening and might connect. I'm not sure who else is in the room. I didn't see everybody enter. So, uh, but I do have a lot of life science investor connections. And I'd be interested in um, circling back with you and learning more about that one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next up is Lonnie Alderman. You'll have to come off mute. Let me see if I need to get you off mute. I don't know if it's me or... There. There we go. Okay. Yes, let's thanks, start thanks for organizing this event. I'm blown away. I heard about it. I didn't expect this. So um, we're in the life science business, specifically... We're in the point of care diagnostics business with health IT as a system. So we, we architected and started developing this system before the pandemic. And then now everybody knows what point of care testing is because of the pandemic. So we have a device that is agnostic as to the test that it runs. We adapt to other people's point of care tests, infectious diseases, uh, lipids, drug screening. And our, all of our devices, our, our system is kind of like a wagon wheel. The hub is, is our IT system on AWS, we call Simple Cloud. And then the spokes go out to all of our devices mm. um, and also to other clouds. So the whole system is open. Um, we just exhibited at the American Association of Clinical Chemistry for the first time. We literally had hundreds of people come by the booth to see this. Nobody has ever developed a system like this for point of care. I know it's a bold statement, but it's true. The reason is we're an engineering company focused on life science. We didn't first develop the test and say, oh, we need some hardware too. Let's see if we can figure that out. We came at it from the other direction. And so the people who are tired of reading tests with their eyeball can now get an objective read, any brand that's on our menu, their supply chain can go to work and negotiate with those manufacturers for the best price for the year. And all the data is conserved. It's there forever. You can go back and look at, um, maybe that was the beep for saying my time is up. No, it is. And I apologize. I just have, people are still messaging me. My, <laughs> okay. No, please so, continue. So, so what we offer, our value proposition, we place the unit at no charge in return for a click for test. Uh, which is pretty popular. Um, we ran some testing in Africa with FIND in Switzerland, which is a consortium. They couldn't go into Africa during the pandemic, so they wanted a system where they could monitor tests up in the cloud from their six countries. 
and everything worked perfectly from dirt roads uh, where they trained somebody to do a finger stick and put the blood into the cartridge. It was it was flawless. And if you can do it there, you can do it anywhere. And we so we've done validation testing. Um, we're generating revenues. We are looking to raise uh, the last four hundred fifty thousand of our seed round to expand our sales. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that's my pitch. Wow. Okay. That's a nice one. I like uh, the life science space, so I'd be interested in learning more. I don't have any media questions. It, 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 investors that are here, do, is there anybody who has a question? Um, you said 450. How much money have you raised um, to date so far? So a total of 800,000, including 50,000 from the Air Force. Oh, hmm. okay. All right, let's move on. Thank, thank you, Lonnie. Thank you. Okay. I'll go back okay. on mute. <laughs> and I apologize for the background noise. I'll try and figure out how to avoid all these people. I don't know if I'm how to get rid of that. Maybe you can help me. Um, okay, up next is Sammy. Hi, Sammy. You'll have to go off of mute. Hey, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks again, Mark, for arranging this. Um, so yeah, so uh, my name is Sammy Sadikian. I'm the founder and CEO of See Alive. And See Alive uh, provides an all-in-one platform for virtual community engagement, where members can engage in activities together in a new interactive space. We've reinvented the multi-user experience by bringing all of your most used collaborative apps community together in one place, and we let you use apps together. Um, CLive is the world's first social broadcast platform that facilitates multi-way interaction and multi-touch access for work, study, and play. Um, so it's basically a really uh, cool experience where you get to interact um, together in small and large groups. It's not just, uh, it goes beyond just video chat and lets you do things together. Like what's different between what you're doing and like Zoom and our ability to interact like this? So with Zoom, it's great for video chatting for meetings, but C Live uh, takes uh, the experience to the next level by letting you interact with content uh, in sync. Uh, it's something that you have to experience, and it's uh, it's a very different experience. So as an example, what we've done is we work with Paramount Pictures, where we have uh, uh, where we let people watch movies together and um, have all these interactive experiences where people do things together um, while video chatting. Um, we've worked with the World Health Organization. We've done work with companies like ABB, Brush Jagger, Formula E Racing, uh, a number of independent studios out of LA. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a very different experience. All right. That does sound interesting. Does anybody have a follow up question? Okay. Sorry. I just have to keep us moving along. I have. Oh, I go have ahead. Just a short question here, sure. uh, because right now we are talking about a lot about uh, Web3 and so forth. Uh, do you have a plan to introduce uh, some kind of those features in your platform? Yeah, so so inherently uh, our platform has um, a distributed uh, concept where multiple people, whether it's in a small group or large group, can interact and the whole interaction and the whole um, uh, process is distributed across multiple people. So that's innately built in the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Mark, my offer still stands open. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh, by the way, just so you know, my assistant is typing as if it was me in the chat. I am not going to see any of your comments. So if you think you're actually reaching out directly to me, probably not going to be seen. If you want to actually reach out to me, send me an email to venture, the number one, and then starters, venture1starters at gmail.com. Happy to be able to answer a question or a thought or, or maybe we'll set up a meeting um, if you uh, contact me that way. Okay, up next is Vijay. I, again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. My my apologies. <laughs> no, you pronounced it right, Vijay. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Vijay Chetty. I am the founder and uh, CEO of Zip and Mail. Our vision at Zip and Mail is to save the trees and preserve our nature for future generations. Our mission is to get rid of paper mail and implement a virtual global postal system. 
Paper mail is a cumbersome process for all of us. Businesses burn billions of dollars every year for paper mail without getting any measurement metrics or ROI. And we kill millions of trees every year for paper mail and almost all of it is thrown in the trash. And our solution is to take the physical mailbox to the cloud. We have created a virtual mailbox platform to send and receive mail using a mailing address without email or sharing links. Our platform is designed just like an email, looks like an email, but when you go to compose, you just type the full address and it will be delivered to the recipient's virtual mailbox. We built the platform, went live about three months ago. We have been testing it with consumers and business, about 150 consumers and dozen businesses to make sure the technology is working. And uh, we went live on uh, Start Engine. We are currently raising capital through crowdfunding and we are just in the process of hiring our first sales rep uh, to launch our marketing campaign within the next week or two. That's the status we are at. If anybody is interested, please contact me. Uh, and good point. Um, when you finish uh, giving your two minutes or less, please go into the chat and put your information down so people can find you. Um, this concept is intriguing to me. You, you and I have talked before, or you, pre you presented this before. Just out of curiosity, how do you think you're going to get um, people to go online to look to see what mail they have coming? How are, how are we going to train people to do that, you know, so that this makes sense? We will keep sending periodic notifications to their email address. When they sign up, they are giving us their email address and their cell numbers to learn to sign up. So we will text them and we will uh, notify via email, hey, you got new zip in mail. Hey, you got new coupons. Hey, you got new uh, rewards. So we will keep notifying them about the value, the benefits they have uh, without annoying them. So we will send it once a week to remind them. Or if any important mail comes along, we will notify them as well. Okay, does anybody have a question? Yeah, Vijay, I'm wondering how much you're raising and uh, maybe how much equity you're looking to exchange for that, if you're allowed to speak on that. Thanks. We are right now raising 5 million under Rex CFO offering through Start Engine, and we are giving 25% ownership in our company for this current round. Okay, good. Thank you. Let's move to Anthony Hartley. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mark, for organizing this. This is great. My name is Anthony Hartley. I'm the co-founder of a platform, a marketplace called MedAdvisor. So let me just paint a picture for you. Probably everybody on this call knows somebody or has heard of somebody that has lower back pain, joint pain, problem with the knees, all sorts of issues that often lead to someone being recommended surgery or sometimes worse, opioids. And in fact, the data shows that there's a much better option. It's much more cost-effective and has so many other advantages and that's cell therapies. So what we've done is we've created a marketplace for cell therapies. And from the very beginning, we've been patient-centric. Now I mentioned employees because so, so many people, they access their healthcare through their employer. And once we start talking about an employer with hundreds of employees, most of those employers are self-funded. So what we've started to do is we're engaging with the employers and also the brokers that manage their health plans so that more employees re realize that there's this option where they can avoid surgery or they can avoid opioids, they can get a better treatment, it costs them less. In fact, it's so cost-effective that for the employer, for every 1,000 employees, we can save them a million dollars a year. So given that we're having inflation and other challenges, we think that more employers will want to know that they don't have to be cutting staff. There's better ways to manage this expense, which is the second or third biggest expense for them after payroll. So we would like to speak with more directors or VPs of finance of these employers, because I think once that they see what we're proposing, they're gonna be interested. And certainly this goes beyond employees. It can also be for people that are uh, getting to retirement age and older. And we're also looking now, we haven't raised any money, but we're quite open to seeing if this is something that we want to do so that we can accelerate this so that more people can have, have this available so that they know that this is available and we can show them the data and they can see, actually, this is much better than surgery. And here's why. Thank you very much. 
Very nice. Is is are are you Pat, are you at the point where you're just scaling or are you still developing? We are engaging now with with employers and also the brokers that serve them. So it's very possible that from one day to the next, there's not going to be the need to raise money. And we're just going to have to start hiring more staff so that we can make sure that we deliver a high quality service. But it's so many people, Mark. I mean, there's millions of people every year that are told, I'll tell you, it's 7 million. There are 7 million people a year that are told, oh, you need surgery for your knee or your back and all this. And most of those people don't need surgery. In fact, most of the healthcare in the U.S. is is not necessary. And that that's a whole... I, I could talk about this for hours, but that's basically one of the areas that we know that we can improve for a lot of people. Okay, sounds great. I, as an investor, I like um, projects where uh, we just need to scale instead of build it. You know, so that this one for you investors like that, this would be a good one to take a look at. Also, for those yep. that just arrived. Um, uh, if you would like to speak, uh, there's the digital raise the hand function and the reaction uh, a, a button at the bottom of your screen or wherever it might be on your computer. So if you, you know, just uh, raise your hand like others so that I'll know who to call upon. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Uh, thank you. If you. Go on mute now. That would be great. Okay, next up is James Lupino. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Uh, James Lupino here. I am a co-founder and director of Risk AI. Risk AI is a joint venture of uh, Modal Technology Corp and Taco Holdings, uh, two IP companies. We are developing a Risk V uh, ASIC to commercialize a novel disruptive AI training technology. And for many of you who are familiar with the AI industry, you know that it's uh, unsustainable. Uh, the data is getting tremendous. The neural networks are getting large. And um, we are commercializing technology that is non-statistical. It's the world's only non-statistical uh, training system. It will guarantee you find the global minimum in a single run. And it also allows you to compress the network greatly. So we believe this is going to revamp the whole training industry. It reduces because it finds a global minimum. The data science time is drastically reduced. It's a, it's a plug and play. You, you don't have all these iterations to find the, the optimum model. Why do we need an ASIC? Uh, it doesn't run on a GPU or a CPU that efficiently. This is using set theory interval arithmetic and therefore the multipliers need to be modified. So you need special circuitry to do it. Uh, it's, a, it's a proven technology. We've, uh, we've proven it on, on small cases, pathological test cases. So from a risk standpoint, we believe there's very low risk. It's just a matter of developing an ASIC and commercializing technology. Does anybody have any questions? How much are you looking to raise? Uh, that's a moving target. Depends on the technology node. Uh, could be as low as 10 million, but we're, we're targeting 25 million. We do have a European firm uh, that's, um, that's our partner. I can't disclose it here, but um, be happy to talk to you. How much, what, what would your post money valuation be off the $25 million raise? I can't disclose that right now, but I, I can point to Cerebros and Graphcore and others in the industry that are billion dollar plus valuation companies. They're all trying to do gradient descent, ASICs. We're not using gradient descent. We're using a totally new method that guarantees you find the optimum solution. It's it's what Jeffrey Hinton says, we need to start over. He's the godfather of AI. Just, it's going on the wrong track right now. The industry needs this solution. So you have, do you have current revenue? Uh, we do not, no, but it is a proven, uh, proven technology and software emulation. So we can- Okay, we can definitely is not I have so many more questions. I definitely want to talk more. You're on LinkedIn, right? Yes. I'll send you, I'll send you a message. I'll send you a message. It does sound very interesting. And thank you for, for presenting, James. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Uh, you can go on mute. That'd be great. And then Matt Sweetwood is up next. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, I am Matt Sweetwood, CEO of Greener Process Systems. Uh, Greener Process Systems has patented technology, which captures and reduces the air pollution from ocean going ships when they are in port. Why is this a problem? Um, port pollution is a massive worldwide health and environmental problem. And up until this moment, nobody uh, has really come up with a solution for this problem until we've come along. Uh, we currently have a, a $10 million contract 
to install three of those systems in Europe, at least three of those systems over the next year. Um, our, our prototype has received TRL ready list level nine. And so we're very excited about the opportunity to expand our company and uh, reach out to the potential $27 billion market, which is 2000 ports and 4,200 uh, port birth locations. Um, our fundraise right now, we're doing a reg CF on uh, start engine and we're looking to give uh, to raise a million dollars to uh, grow our biz dev unit and continue to uh, increase the number of patents we have. Currently have uh, two separate patents in both Europe and the United States and we're patent pending on a, a few other technologies. So we're really excited about the opportunity to fix this problem. It's been a problem that has been ongoing for many, many years and obviously as the shipping industry has grown exponentially with the advent of Amazon and all of the other ways that we get our material. The pollution problem has also grown exponentially and Greener Process Systems is here to uh, actually solve that problem. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to, I'm back. Okay, the, uh, Matt, I actually liked your, uh, I think for anybody who wants to really understand, you need to see the visuals, um, you know, as to how he actually is pulling the pollutants off of the cruise ships or the cargo ships. And now I wasn't clear what you did with it once you sucked it into your system. I assume that you're sort of that I'm sucking it in may not be the right adjective. Yeah, okay, so let me just say that we have very sophisticated technology. It's robotics. Um, we, create, we create a hermetic seal over any ship smokestack. That's part of the magic of what we do is that it can fit essentially any ship and it filters it into a dry powder. And those particles would normally be sprayed all over uh, adjoining cities. And just as another fact, uh, port cities actually, about 70% of the pollution in port cities comes from the port itself. Very good. I'd like to introduce you to Rain Ions, a, a company I'm on the board of that has a solution for air pollution, which may um, might be something you can uh, add to what you're doing. It, in, um, anyways, circle back with me on that. By the way, if I come up with an idea in the middle of the event tonight, and I say circle back with me on that idea, please do because I won't remember that I even pitched an idea in the middle of this event when there's 40 people that are you know, presenting in a night. So, and, and last week, if I had any ideas for any of you and you're wondering why you didn't hear from me, it's probably because I literally just forgot. So circle back with me and remind me what I said in the middle of this event if, there, if I had some reason to you know, point something out. Thank you, Matt. We're gonna, and if you can mute, uh, okay, you're great. Okay, next up is Scott, Scott Moffat. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this is uh, really cool, and, and I appreciate you uh, setting this up, getting uh, uh, innovators, entrepreneurs all in one place. So I am the co-founder and head of partnerships for an organization called Ideal Strategic Partners. Um, we are not looking for investors. Um, what we are is essentially a hybrid uh, between a VC um, and an accelerator incubator. So uh, we really serve uh, an underserved market and everyone is looking for the next tech unicorn. Um, we focus on direct to consumer products um, and working with entrepreneurs that are very early stage. So based on you know, some of the pitches that I've already heard, um, sounds like a lot of you are, are pretty far uh, down the path. Uh, so I don't think that, you know, this is gonna be a great fit, at least for the projects you're presenting today. But one thing that I've learned in 14 years working uh, with entrepreneurs is creative minds and, uh, and innovators uh, continue to innovate uh, and they continue to be creative. So to the extent that um, we might be able to help, we get about 2000 to 2500 inquiries on a monthly basis. Um, we focus again, our, our process is called Idea Path. So it starts um, really anywhere from an idea on a napkin or a patent or a homemade prototype. Um, and we, we kind of emulate, a lot of you are probably familiar with GLG, Gerson Lehman Group. And so we have 52 advisors that are industry experts across a, really a variety of different industries. Um, they get involved strategically with their connections, also with their capital. Um, so we take a vested interest in all the projects that are part of our portfolio. Um, but we also have a heavy operational involvement in getting it from idea concept to revenue generation. The earlier the companies and, and, and founders and startups take on capital, the more they have to give up. Um, so we, we look to really accomplish a proof of concept 
um, with with as minimal outlay of, of capital as possible, um, because then you're able to deliver more value and get more for the, the, the capital that you're going to get. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and post our LinkedIn page, my LinkedIn page, and our website. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. That's great, Scott. Just out of curiosity, where are you located? We have a West Coast headquarters in San Diego, where about 70% of our team is. Um, I am uh, in our East Coast headquarters, downtown Tampa, Florida. Ah, very good. Okay. And then in terms of the companies you work with, are they mostly U.S. or are you international? All U.S. All U.S. We have had some of our portfolio partners that have scaled nationally, but we focus. There's too much opportunity here. And frankly, uh, in the U.S., we don't we don't make enough anymore as we should. So, you know, focusing on that that innovation and We've got a network of 14 manufacturers that we have exclusive relationships with. A lot of them um, have international factories and facilities. And so it's really an A to Z solution. Instead of you know, working with four or five different organizations or companies, um, we oversee that entire process of getting to market and really mentor uh, our partners to make sure that they're prepared uh, to take over and scale the business. Thank you very much, Scott. Another point just for everybody is after you've pitched, if you can t um, uh, put your hand down instead of it being raised, uh, it'll help organize, uh, I think, all of the, uh, the feed going into me, um, at least. Okay, up next is Anna uh, Bahav. I'm sorry, I, I'll let you tell your name. <laughs> You're, gonna, you're still on mute. I'm sorry, we're not hearing you yet. You're still on mute. There you go. Um, thank you. This is such an amazing event and thank you for the opportunity. So uh, my name is Anubhav uh, and I'm the founder CEO of Fab Venues. And let me just tell you how I came up with this idea. Uh, like I've been into marketing for quite a number of years now and I had to host an event which in involved an activation event like in a dealer meet for 500 business partners, CXO meet. And at the same time, there was a long weekend and I had to manage hotel bookings as well. Now with multiple sites to browse, many event guys to talk to, it was not easy to say the least. And because there are, there are different places for different kind of venues. And then this need really struck me and stayed with me that what if, if we have one place where I can find all the venues together, I pick up different venues, talk to them or chat with them without having to do hundreds of calls and yet book all the places in the quickest way possible. So, and that was the genesis of uh, Fab Venues. It's fab, fabulous venues. Uh, it's a marketplace for renting short-term stay and event venues with host of powerful features. Uh, and the operational area can be like New Delhi in India or New York in America or the whole of India or the whole of America. Like it's catering to a wide diverse demography. Now this, the whole revenue model is paper booking, subscription, and featured appearance uh, to begin with. The leadership team, I am the founder and CEO. I come from a business family background. I've been working for over 22 years now. I've worked in sales, business development, marketing, and operations. And I'm currently the chief business officer in a home state travel startup in Pennsylvania, US for the last five years. And I have Vishnu who manages the IT and he specializes in PHP and blockchain technology with 10 years of experience. Now in the marketplace, we have formidable competition from, uh, for like, you know, some segments like hotels, resorts, and homestays. But we believe that there's a lot of room when it comes to event venues and furthermore, huge opportunity lies in getting many venues, which are still unorganized mm -hmm. and virgin market for us like malls, hostels, apartment outdoors. Now, while we understand the competition out there, we also understand that we stand out with an advantage of having diverse venues on board, paving way for attracting significant online traffic. Now, we have the examples to adopt and learn best practices while leveraging technology for reducing our costs for quicker and high, higher ROI. Uh, for making this venture a success, I seek an investment of a million dollars in exchange for 15% of the equity. Uh, at the end, I just like to leave you this thought, like you know, when next time anyone is going out and you see a lovely house or a nice diner or a nice banquet hall, just think that they all could be your product and you could play a significant part in their lives and their business with Fab Venues. That's all from me. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Does anybody have a follow-up question? Please leave your name and email information in the chat in case somebody wants to follow up with you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up is Benazir. Yes. Okay. You're, you're on. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for, for having me and this opportunity. My name is Benazir, and I'm uh, an artist and the founder of the Bivision uh, Art. Uh, I'm working on the NFT collections uh, that bring the meanings and like uh, and empower uh, women in the uh, Web3 area. So right now, just 5% of the um, markets in the Web3 are belong to women. And um, the rest is some uh, meaningless NFT collections. Um, with no aim and like goals, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm aiming to like empower the women and uh, bring education to uh, the metaverse and um, and the Web3 in order to everyone can like have equal opportunity uh, to get access to the uh, um, um, like great educations. And so um, I'm looking for partners uh, to uh, bring this to the next level. Uh, to the like gaming, 3D uh, arts, and um, someone who has the experience in uh, crypto, um, crypto world, um, and um, um, I, I would like to connect with you uh, if you can like um, help me in this. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, put your email information in the chat. Um, we're going to have to start. I'm going to have to move the pace up because we still have 28 people that would like to uh, say something and there may even be more that would and uh, you know we're right I, I want to respect everybody's time tonight so okay next up is Michael Diego hey Mark hey everybody thanks for having me uh, my name is Michael Diego I'm the founder and CEO of Wise Assistant where we're building the monetization platform for local content creators so I've been a digital creator my entire life, and I know exactly how hard it is to monetize as an independent digital creator. I'm taking my experience in marketing and software development for some of the biggest tech companies in the world to build the all-in-one monetization platform for underrepresented local creators. Wise Assistant helps creatives connect with local leisure businesses and food, nightlife, and travel while helping creators diversify their revenue streams by selling innovative digital products, events, and experiences. Influencer marketing has been hijacked by closed global networks and influencer marketplaces, but nobody is building local creator communities. So we're building the de facto network of local creator communities, and we're already in six cities. We have over 565 creators, and they've brought over 6,000 of their su subscribers into our ecosystem. We make money through premium subscriptions and affiliate marketing models. And we're an underrepresented team of six entrepreneurs, and our vision is to help experienced creators leave their nine to five by starting a business and working for themselves. We're currently in an LGBTQ-focused startup accelerator in partnership with J.P. Morgan Chase, and we're looking to raise a pre-seed round towards the end of the year. Okay, that sounds very interesting. Um, how, I, so I wasn't clear how you were different from like a, a pat, Patreon. I guess there was more services you were connecting them up with, uh, but I'd be interested in seeing the pitch. You may have sent it to me, and if you did, I haven't looked, sorry, but I'd be curious. Yeah, no, so we're focused on experience creators, which have it a little bit more challenging and packaging up and monetizing their products. Um, today, they're marketing, they're monetizing primarily through uh, local partnerships, and we're helping them diversify with a variety of innovative products and services that we help them scale. Great. If anybody's interested in talking to Michael, look him up in the chat. Okay, we're going to move on. PJ actually has one of the coolest things going. I went to his website. He's the next up. He, he's doing things with vans. I'm actually going to get out there and look at your place one of these days. We'd love to have you. Yeah, you totally got me excited. But go ahead. Tell us about your, your company. Open invitation. Anybody in the area wants to come by and see a crazy factory. Uh, Modvans designs and manufactures high-tech multi-purpose vehicles with camping features, and we sell them direct to consumers off our website, modvans.com. We offer six vehicle models, three different sizes. Uh, we have a uniquely designed vehicle that fits the sweet spot between an SUV and a traditional RV. Uh, half of our customers replace their everyday vehicle with one of ours. Modvans has been in business for five years, and we've delivered over 100 
over 100 vehicles to happy customers all over the U.S., um, East Coast, West Coast. We've grown production and revenue every year, and we're on track to hit 10 million in revenue in 2022. We're far ahead of our competition in both design and technology. Lots of details to provide in that in a more uh, elaborate pitch. Uh, market response to ModVans has been incredible, and our production has never been able to meet demand. We're currently raising money to move to a larger facility, grow production from 10 vehicles a month to 100 vehicles per month, and work on our exciting R&D projects. That is exciting. It, you guys need to really, if you're interested in this, you need to look at his website. His products are outstanding. Very, uh, I'm really jazzed about it. About Thanks, man. <laughs> so, hey, Mark, yeah. so where is he located? We're located in Oxnard, California. It's 60 miles northwest of LA. Thank you. Good. Thank you, PJ. Appreciate you. that. Okay. We're up, up next is Miriam. You're still on mute. Yeah. There you okay. go. Hello, everyone. And uh, thanks for having this good opportunity. I wanted to talk about an issue that is like pretty big these days. And it has been for a while, but we're getting more traction only now. And that is climate. So that's what we are in the space of dealing with, in particular, plastic pollution. Right now, you know, we have a climate bill going on. We have the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We have all sorts of stuff that's being uh, hit at us about the problem. And we need solutions. So my uh, little climate tech startup, we've been working on that all through the pandemic, basically to see what we can do across countries. Our team is all over the place to see how we can solve this problem. And we worked very hard on that. We have patented our technology. We are making products. So you will not have to use petroleum-based plastic. Our products are made with plants. And these replace, for the most part, the products out there. For example, you have the large plastic manufacturers who have uh, these big machines that they use. I won't get into the details of that here, but they use plastic pellets and they would replace that with our pellets, which are bio-based or plant-based. We right now have a customer, a multinational customer testing us out. We're running a really good pilot project. They're a European company, but also based in the US. And once that gets off the ground, you know, we are hoping that we will get their endorsement and move that ahead. So we need to get manufacturing off the ground. We need to commercialize our products. In order to do that, we're seeking $2.5 million to get the factory going. We could settle for less if we were to trim down on the types of products that we are set to make. Mainly, we have a scientific team, and therefore, we have a whole line of uh, products that we could look into. But to narrow it down, we have focused on a few that deal with the plastic uh, cups, bowls, uh, other items that are household goods. And on the other side, we have a product that deals with packaging. The packaging industry is huge. The potential is great. And therefore, already through three, four CFOs who have worked with us to evaluate us, we are at 21 million uh, valuation right now. Uh, glad to speak with anyone who is in the climate space, who is doing something about plastic pollution, since we know we need to do something about it. And recycling is great, but not working as... 80, 90 some percent of recycling is not really uh, being done. So we need alternatives. And that's what my company, Shonali Bioplastics, working on plants is doing. That's about it from me for now. Glad to uh, connect. I'll put my info here. That sounds outstanding. Where are you located? Uh, we're based in California. I've been in the Bay Area for decades, uh, but we want to do our manufacturing uh, on the other side of the planet in a country called Bangladesh. So I've made a lot of visits over there. We've set up a company there. We are seeing uh, where we can set up a factory. So we've, we've done all the legwork. Leg we have a 100-page business plan of uh, what to do and how to do it. We need investment to commercialize. All right. Very good. Really interesting. Thank you so much for presenting. Thank you. Okay. Next up is Dennis. Hello. 
There you go. You're alive. Okay. Right. Um, I, I can see a lot of people in here, very interesting um, ideas and a lot more um, information to really digest in. And I appreciate all of you guys um, taking the time to be here and for inviting me as well. If you can hear me clearly, I would understand. We can hear um, you perfect. Great. So I, I'm in the e I'm, I'm in the e-commerce um, side of the business. I do a lot of work in the Amazon. Um, as we all know that in the U.S. or across the world, there's recessions happening and um, people are trying to um, see where they're going to invest their money because um, there's really a lot of risk going on. Um, I, I would say that um, cash is always king and um, people are all sitting in their um, in their home um, just buying stuff in Amazon, most, most mostly probably. So... Um, well, what I'm saying is um, I have lots of opportunities in the automotive niche where you can actually create your own private label brand. Uh, while you're doing your hustles every day, um, you can have a passive income um, creating an Amazon brand and selling it to people. Um, there are like millions of people across the world. And um, aside from the fact that there's like also millions of um, shoppers of Amazon every day. So um, I'm very much interested if I can get sellers or investors who could actually, um, um, you know, um, take the advantage of the, 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 the recessions and the economy's um, issues right now where um, people are still buying lots of items in, in the Amazon world. And um, I am very focused on the automotive niche because it is less saturated. Um, it is highly um, demand and um, there's really a lot of money out of there. Okay, Dennis, thank you very much for coming and presenting. We're going to move on to Benjamin. All right, thank, thank, thank you. you. Hey, everyone. My name is Ben Kromnick. Uh, thanks, Mark, so much for having us and for building this incredible community uh, so quickly, which is pretty amazing. Um, I do a couple of things. The first thing here is I am the head of product marketing and our startup deal flow for a company called Fundify, which is an equity crowdfunding platform um, that we founded back in 2021 and uh, started scaling it in 2021, quickly realized that there were some uh, additional and different opportunities more on the distribution side of some of those investments. So Fundify has since pivoted in a bit of a stealth mode right now, developing a net new product for the crowdfunding space. A couple of you are on Start Engine, which is really exciting and excited to look at some of your campaigns. Um, now that Fundify is in this kind of different pivoted mode, um, I've been spending a lot of time working with companies that are doing crowdfunding campaigns and generally working with product strategies. So I also do my own independent consulting work, um, mostly for companies, again, raising capital in the seed or series A, uh, big emphasis on those who have a, a community component to their business model. And then lastly, I am a uh, managing partner at a venture fund called Level Up Ventures. Level of Ventures is an early stage growth fund that invests in future of work, fintech, and health tech companies, primarily as a non-traditional lead. That means $250,000 checks and um, a number of boutique professional services that come, we kind of wrap around every one of our investments to help you primarily finish out your round and get funded so you can get back to solving your problem and um, pr providing really targeted uh, services around unique problems that every one of us has who are all sitting in this room, try to go solve some really hard problem. And we go try, try to find experts to bring into your business for uh, you know, a couple of months at a time to help you scale through your, your series A or your seed round. Um, happy to take any questions. Love to connect with some of you uh, offline and connect with half of you already here on LinkedIn. So I really appreciate it and I'll wrap it up. Any questions, please reach out. Thank you, Ben, for coming because you may be perfect for a number of our founders here. And I'm, you know, this is exactly what I'm looking to do is connect people to people. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. We're going to have to move on because we still have 23 people that want to present in the next hour. So let's we'll see how that all goes. Hi, Matt. Welcome. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, Matt Wampler, founder and CEO of ClearCogs. Level Up Ventures passed on us last month, so just a heads up there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll keep mine short. Uh, so restaurants waste a lot of food. So roughly 10 to $20 billion in food as a result of just over-prepping every day. 
So uh, most of them basically just guess or use average sales. Uh, here at ClearCogs, we do demand forecasting, all machine learning based, specifically focus on predictive prep. So like telling the bagel maker, hey, this is how many everything bagels you need. This is how many plain bagels you need. We're in about 100 restaurants and uh, save our restaurants roughly half of their waste. Okay. Thank you, Matt. We're going to move on just to keep things going so we can try and get everybody up that wants to speak. So, Kevin, you're up next. Cool. Um, thanks again, Mark. As always, it's so great to just listen to everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Famigia, founder and CEO of Bridge Labs. We have an ecosystem of over 300 African software developers in Africa. So we are building a SaaS platform that enables African developers in Africa to connect with employers worldwide. So we are trying, we are solving the infrastructure barrier issues that prevent employers from, from hiring African tech talent in Africa. So we are solving these four issues. One, uh, we are building a robust vetting process that, that allows them to really score on the efficacy, system performance, functions, emotional intelligence, as well as their code. And two, we are um, solving like the payment gateway. Um, and as you know, uh, West African developers are 20 times, excuse me, 20 percent cheaper than Indian developers. Um, so, so we want to enable employers to still pay in their native currency as the African developers in Africa to receive the money through, uh, to receive the payment compensation through mobile money. So we, we want to be, make sure that both sides are okay with that. And three, when it comes to like, the hiring process, we are serving as the um, EOR, -E the, empl the employee of record. Uh, so we want to take care of the um, HR compliance. So you don't ha have to worry about um, the, the, the liability and also like the logistics. And four, we, we um, since operating in the space, we have, I have partnered with over three African universities, uh, one in Cameroon or another one in Liberia and also another one in Nigeria. And one of the biggest issue is the network um, problem when it comes to communicating. So, so we are taking that very intentionally and building a, a low bandwidth communication platform in it. So, so allow employers to communicate with the African tech developers. So it can actually have that streamlined connection. So I'm very excited. I'm happy to be um, connected with any of y'all that is really passionate about that the emerging tech talent that's going on in Africa. So thanks again. Thank you, Kevin. Glad to hear that there's uh, African opportunities here. All right, next up is Ed. Hi, greetings from the East Coast in Boston. I'm Ed Golick, founder and CEO of QSM Diagnostics. And uh, we make test kits for pet owners to help them determine the cause of symptoms that they notice in their cats and dogs. So kits like this, you can think of, well, can't really see my blurred background, but similar to companies like Everly Well for Humans, we're doing this for cats and dogs. If you think they might have an ear infection or urinary tract infection or uh, kidney disease, uh, pet owners can get one of these kits from a veterinarian or from our website, collect a sample themselves, send it in, we'll analyze it, share the results out so that they know what they can need to do for the next steps for helping their pets. Um, and uh, this really helps to accelerate the diagnostic process. Uh, you know, with COVID, uh, really the spend on companion animals has gone through the roof, particularly the uh, amount of workload for vets have gone up. So people are waiting up to two weeks to see their veterinarian and they're feeling very anxious about what's wrong with their pets. This way they can get all of the testing started and have the test results ready to go when they talk to their veterinarian. Um, we uh, went on, started sales of this uh, about six months ago. We have a suite of products of these test kits. Uh, we're currently raising a seed round on a convertible note, trying to raise $8 million on uh, with a 
or $2 million with an $8 million cap and a 10% discount. Okay, thanks, Ed. Appreciate that. Put your name in the chat. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to have time to add follow-up questions if we're going to try and get everybody in. Um, apologies. Maybe that'll happen in future events. Um, okay, up next is Steve. Yes. Hi, Mark. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So um, thank you for having me here. My name is Steve Pavuli. I'm an inventor, and my latest creation is called iStash. Air throughout time will make cannabis and actually most anything edible dry and brittle so people become creative as to how to be, uh, extend its shelf life by using a mason jar, putting it in a plastic bag and then in the freezer. But another problem is that you, if you have children, they can have access to it as well, something that you don't want as a parent. Hence, I created the ice stash. Ice stash is a high-tech container that has a built-in electric vacuum pump. You place your CBD infused edibles like gummies and cookies or cannabis, et cetera, into the jar, put the lid on, turn on the pump, and within 30 seconds, you have created a vacuum seal environment inside the container. Also, because of the pressure inside, it is virtually impossible to remove the lid. So it has a fingerprint reader, whereas you enroll your fingerprint, and then you are the only one that can access its contents. When you tap the biometric reader with your finger, it will allow air to go in to the container, which breaks the vacuum seal, and then you can remove the lid. Uh, I have the patent for it. It was uh, granted a, a little over two months ago. And um, yeah, I, I have actually a jar here if you'd like to see it. It's, uh, I can show how it works. And I have also a smaller one that works via an app. It's already, the app is on uh, the App Store and Play Store. And I'm, I'm ready to uh, to launch it. Um, I have. Uh, um, uh, not prototypes, but these are production units. So just for you to see how it looks, and this is the big jar, and it has fingerprint reader right here, and you turn on the pump from here, and you can hear it. It takes about 30 seconds to extract all the air. And, you know, if you have five-year-olds at home and you have CBD-infused gummies, for instance, you don't want them to get into the to the cookie jar, right? So uh, it does have a fingerprint reader. So the owner is the only one that can open it up. And basically what I'm looking for is a, an influencer, uh, possibly a partner also, and take it um, to social media. Okay, Steve, that, that's pretty high tech for, for gummies. <laughs> yeah, um, again, it's to protect children and it's to- uh, Totally makes sense. I get it. I totally get it. Anyways, I appreciate you coming. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. We're going to move on to, to Munley. Oh, hey. Hey, Mark. Um, yes, yeah, so unlike everybody else here, I'm actually not going to be pitching a startup because my startup days are mostly behind me, not entirely. Um, I'm mainly looking to connect with investors who, are A, would actually look at gaming or better yet, even know something about gaming. Like when I was a gaming startup, the numbers were absolutely abysmal <laughs> right like where like um majority of tech investors literally didn't even know like what the game con what game consoles were out like it was a bit strange but so two so two categories gaming and then international as in um if you're uh in the us or whatever like most investors are but you would actually cut a check to an international team because so that was the other barrier um i'm sure it, like the <laughs> many international founders here know uh you know that's the issue you could literally be the next google but it's because you're um outside of the us um you know it's just not gonna work like it's too much hassle do the deal or whatever so the other reason um you know i uh, stayed up till <laughs> practically 4 a.m to do this is because i wanted to connect with you um mark to say hi you know put a face to the name and say thanks for doing this um i want to i've actually moved over to the fund level I'm trying to solve these funding gaps um, but I wanted to connect um, with you just because of your uh, past history and um, Rolodex of the entertainment industry. I basically think Hollywood um, it knows more about gaming now than uh, tech, tech does. There are plenty of Hollywood studios or whatever that's, that you know, are starting or buying into their to have their own gaming arms or whatever. And um, I'm going to send you an email about it. But just wanted to say hi and so you knew where it came from. Okay, done. I, I appreciate that. And it turns out the gaming industry grosses more money now than the movie industry, which is just amazing that that's what happened. But let's move oh, on. Anyway, <laughs> send, send me some information. Thank yeah, you yeah, very yeah. much. Cheers.
Okay, we're going to move on to Ishan. Yeah, thanks, Mark. This is Asan, and I'll do this fast. So, Mark and everyone else, you know, if you wanted to go on a fancy vacation, do you have something right now to figure out what the financial impact is of that vacation to your short term and long term future? I highly doubt it. Something that's in real time will show you the financial impact. And why is that important? It's because that fan fancy vacation might mean you have to get a smaller house. Or it turns out, you know, if let's say you're paying down your student loan debt too fast, it might mean that fancy vacation is going to have to get delayed. So here at Zestify, we're building a real-time app that allows you to understand the financial impact of your life decisions, whether it's buying a car or a house or paying down your student loan debt or raising a kid. And the reason we're doing this and realizing it's a big problem is because people are busy. They have to juggle a lot, right? There's a lot of things that you want in life. I'm a data scientist and I realized we need to have an AI that helps people see the financial impact of their financial decisions and make it game-like so they can run scenarios and see what's financially possible. We're starting a fundraise soon, 500K for 20%. We, if you're familiar with the health tech space and particularly a startup called Noom, we're building Noom for money. My name is Asan. connect with me. That was great. Thank you very much. Put your information in the chat, please. Um, I apologize to some of the investors that are with us that I now recognize are here, and none of you are probably going to have time to talk, but maybe in a future uh, one of our events, you'll at least introduce yourself. Um, okay, up next is Bert. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mark. Good to see you again. Now, Bert Vank from InfiniRail Corporation. That stands for Infinite Reliability. We build predictive diagnostics for renewable energy plants that rely on electronics connecting clean energy to the grid and those units fail. Uh, in fact, um, we're a Santa Cruz company operating out of Chicago. Oh, we re received some funding from MHUB and working with a limited partner in Vanergy, an energy company. That's along another three pilot test agreements that we have and one is completely signed and waits for execution. Our team did this before, turning around solar plants. I launched 14 power management product lines and the underlying problem has costed renewable energy investors $1 billion just last year, only in the US. With now the bill on the floor, that's gonna be 10X the next five years and 100X globally, unless we change the path. And that is our mission for that. We are raising $1 million on convertible notes today. And I'm open for questions. I don't hear we'll you. Have, we'll, we'll have to uh, hold off on the questions for tonight, okay. unfortunately. But I appreciate that you're here. And everybody, please keep coming back because this is all about networking, visibility, getting people comfortable with you. We're not likely to solve the your funding solution just in one evening, although it's a possibility. By the way, David Culver just put up a, a post in the chat. He's a fantastic investor, amazing guy. Please reach out to him. I just noticed that go through. Um, anyways, we're gonna move on to Tino as our next speaker. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mark. Hi, my name is Tino Go. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Baru. Baru quickly delivers high quality custom furniture and cabinets at really mainstream prices. We figured out how to use leverage underused manufacturing robotics to avoid all the shipping and handling that wastes $15 billion of the $35 billion revenue industry. So as a digital platform, we're leveraging these super commonplace but underused robotics in our hometowns to bring the manufacturing and jobs closer to the customer. Currently, we're scaling sales volumes with cabinetry for architects and reselling through interior design showrooms. Um, so um, not only does our uh, localized network speed delivery, we're actually carbon negative because our carbon footprint is so small that we can plant three offsets and it's gone. And so we got sales and manufacturing in 29 cities in the US within a one hour delivery of over 100 million people's homes and businesses. So we're selling through dealers and also directly. Our sales year to date are in the six figures and we've got a patent on the use of uh, 
augmented reality to customize a product for on-demand production. We've been invited to uh, by the Department of Defense to show that technology so they can modify parts to repair vehicles and other mission critical equipment. We're raising our seed round to accelerate our revenue growth. Uh, we'll, with the seed round, we'll be able to attain positive cash flows and continue to grow quickly. Uh, current investors have invested $350,000 to date. And um, the, an additional 1 million would buy more than 10% of the company and will grow super fast. That sounds fantastic, Tino. I have to say, I'd like to learn more. Thank you very much for presenting. We're going to move on, though, just because of timing. Daryl, welcome back. <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. Uh, I knew you and I are due to speak on Monday. I'll keep this very brief, but uh, thanks again for building this community. I've gotten connected and spoken to a couple of uh, investors, so that's, uh, I'm really appreciative. Uh, so I'm, I'm with an early stage uh, pre-seed sports tech platform called Rakodi, uh, which is developing a community that's going to partner teams with fans uh, in a very strategic fashion. Uh, really by turning them into strategic assets to leverage content that they share uh, in, their, their, in, their, in their own voice. Uh, so really you're going to be providing teams with very unique data uh, and, and build symbiotic relationships. There's lots of reliable revenue streams and it's much cleaner and cohesive and relevant. Um, so the, there's really high margin here. There's a, a multi-tenant SaaS platform. We've just gotten started with the MVP and we're very interested in, the, uh, in getting this out the door because the interest has been uh, phenomenal across the professional, amateur, and NCAA um, uh, leagues and, and tournaments. So that's really it. Happy to connect on LinkedIn uh, in the interest of time. I'll pass the baton, but uh, thanks again for the opportunity to talk about Cody a little bit. You know, sports uh, usually finds uh, investors if it's if it's right. So I have I have a good feeling about this for you, Daryl. Yeah, you yeah you have a you have the deck. I know you're a busy guy. I, I didn't have a chance to look at it. I it's promise. Right. Eventually, I'll get to it. And I thank you so thank much. You so much. Okay, Ibis, you have one of my favorite projects. You're up next. My wife and my daughter think that this is a winner, and I'd like you to explain it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark, for the kind intro, and nice to see everybody from the prior events. Um, thanks for connecting us, too, with some of the investors already. Um, so I became an entrepreneur, and my focus is really the femtech field um, because when I was younger, I... I um, basically had a procedure at a younger age and uh, definitely did not like the experience with the gynecologist. And so um, as many of you know, when women need to be examined for whatever reasons for cervical cancer, any cysts, et cetera, um, this is really the device that exists, the speculum. And I just hate that noise. <laughs> Uh, and it's a device that's been around for over 70 years now. Um, so it came to me as a shocker that uh, no one has worked harder to replace it. Um, so with Pureva, I am the founder and CEO, and we have a team of five, including an intern. Um, my co-founder has a PhD in the breast oncology area, and I have a background in ovarian cancer uh, research. We're working on developing and commercializing the Apache. So it is a wearable diagnostics for detection of gynecologic oncology malignancies, uh, beginning with cervical cancer as a primary um, in the area of indication. However, this is a femtech platform technology. So our second market of entry would be ovarian cancer, and it could certainly be applied to endometrial breasts, et cetera. Uh, we're currently fundraising a $2 million seed round um, to get to our minimum viable product and start kicking off our pilot studies. We have two really strong connections with a local health system here um, called Beacon Health, 
we're in the Midwest in the Indiana and Chicago region. Um, but my prior background was with Yale University. So we are also really connected with the clinicians at the Yale Cancer Center. And we just want to make this triangular connection work out. Uh, those $2 million would be able to get us um, to showcase that the MVP is functioning and um, really provided us a service for women to get um, cervical cancer detection in a non-invasive manner, more accurately, same day, and with a referral that same day to a gynecologic oncologist if they do indeed test positive. I hope, I hope our community can figure out how to get this one funded. So, but we're gonna have to move on. Thank you very much. Brian's next. You're on mute, Brian. I have no video. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back to you. <laughs> How about Fedor? Are you ready to, to pitch? Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you, Mark, for hosting this nice event. Um, I'll try to keep it short. So my name is Fedor. I'm co-founder of a company called Acquired.io without C. Uh, so in 2014, Sequoia reported that uh, they lost uh, um, about in 52% of their deals. So we're trying to change that number and make it much better. Uh, so Acquired is the first automated investment platform for early stage startups. And uh, what we want to do, we want to provide more transparency, make a decision uh, for investors more data driven. Um, which we hope results in a better uh, outcome and better performance for the investment. So currently we're pre-seed uh, raising uh, 500K in SAFE based in California. Uh, if you're interested in testing our demo or learn more, I will post information in our chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Brian, did you come back to your screen? You're, you're still in my number one position, Brian De uh, Deutsch. I think we're gonna move on then. Okay, Robert, you're up. You're on mute though. There you go. Hello everybody. Thank you, Mark. My name is Robert McNeese. Um, I'm the visionary behind multidimensional principles, the inventor of a multidimensional signal, multi uh, founder of Lucier Enterprises, Technologies and data is high tech, both hardware and software. Uh, for the last 200 years, basically, since the advent of the uh, telegraph system, everything in today's modern technology, the signal has always been one dimensional. A bit, or back then it was a dot and dash followed sequentially. Created and it's in a mathematical formula into the power of three, into the power of x. I'm sorry, and um, we have created a multidimensional signal into the power of xyz. I'm sorry, fellas, I'm not good at giving that many good of speeches here. Uh, today's technology is um, sequential and linear. Lucier has a signal based on uh, into the to power of X, Y, Z. Our first major technology is called zero seek time technology. We're looking to uh, finance that with $7.5 million. We're giving up 40% of investment over the next three to five years. Uh, zero seek time is the single largest bottleneck in every system's architecture today. It's a single largest, it's a multi-billion dollar problem in data acquisitions. Uh, my name is Robert McNeese. My company is Lucere. And thank you, Mark, for allowing me the time. No, please continue to come back. Thank you, Robert. I so appreciate you for being here. Up next is Mohammed. Um, thank you, Mark, again, um, for putting the event together. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Look up. Okay, my name is Mohammed Shafiq, and I'm the CEO of Capture My Meeting. Um, in today's highly connected and collaborative world, it's often difficult to remember the details that were discussed during the many virtual meetings, events that we attend throughout the day. Rather, these are all hands meeting, you know, discussing company-wide changes, a class sector going over an important concept or for an upcoming exam. 
or content saw discussing the contemporary innovations in our field, it's extremely useful to be able to look back on, the, on these meetings and have the ability to search through their content quickly afterward without having to take sensitive meeting notes. Here at Capture Meeting, we're building an you know, online web application that indexes users' video recordings and enables them to view, share, search, and share the spoken and written, so think of slides and whiteboard, content of their recorded content um, quickly, uh, empowering them to find what they're looking for at any time, um, and helping them become more productive and efficient. We currently have in our, um, our MVP product ready with the Zoom integration um, and are looking to raise the 750K in return for a 22K person equity. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you could, you know, um, get back to me. I'll post my information in the text box. Fantastic. Thank you, Mohammed. We're going to move on to Hamadou. Hello. Thank you, Mark, for this chance presenting uh, our ideas. Uh, let me start with a very familiar quote that always we are hearing, that the data is king. I think most of us as founders, entrepreneurs, or even investors looking for data to validate our ideas and to validate business decisions to make to minimize the risk that we are taking in our lab and in our business. That's why market research is very important, very crucial. However, market research faced a lot of the challenges, especially after the pandemic. The three main challenges that market research were, were facing is running the market research operation itself, since it's very costly and has human error when, it, when it's related to asking respondents and sending some people to get feedback from specific respondents and locations. And definitely reaching out to proper customers and proper respondents. And finally, to retain those respondents, to keep asking them and getting feedback about specific features and specific products we are trying to sell. That's why we build Scoutic, Scoutic and automated solution for market research that make an end-to-end -to -end solution for anyone who would like to run a market research without even having the full knowledge of how to run a market research. In a very simple UI and UX platform, just get some steps and get the user in all the steps till they launch the, the market research activity and get all the data on a dashboard automatically. This is my idea, yeah, this is my startup. Uh, I hope to connect with some potential uh, collaborators I'm looking for uh, co-founders to join my journey and uh, complete the development stage. And definitely uh, for investors, if someone would like to connect, please connect to my LinkedIn. Great, thank you very much. Okay, next up is Al, who is one of our co-sponsors. I'm actually gonna get involved in helping Al and his group. I like what he's doing. Al, you're not on video though. You're gonna have to switch your camera back on. There you go. Okay. Hey, thanks, Mark. Appreciate the time. My name is Mark Convention. My name is Al Brzezinski, and I'm an Army veteran. I'm a highly skilled business executive, innovator, and strategic public relations marketing expert with a proven ability to solve multifaceted problems. Throughout my 30-year career, I have contributed to the success of major league professional sports leagues, national advertising campaigns, successful startup businesses, in the National Veterans Memorial Museum, a project which is close to my heart. Equally important, during COVID-19, the team was assembled to develop a mobile medical response system to address the civilian military challenging problem of critical care hospital bed shortages, or what they call med surge. During this, this whole meeting here, which has been great, I noticed some terms that have been thrown around like SBIR, STTR, uh, technical readiness, readiness level nine. So for those individuals I've reached out to and others who are trying to access government funds, as part of our process of trying to bring our innovation to market, have learned a lot of lessons as it relates to uh, trying to navigate the system. As a public affairs officer or a retired public affairs officer in, from the Army and also serving with the Department of VA, Realized throughout this whole process, working with universities and the DOD and other federal agencies like HHS and the State Department, Department of State, so on and so forth. What I find amazing is, and something that Mark really stresses, and I applaud him for this and Luke for what they do here, is that he said during our last meeting, it's not what you, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Totally agree with that. But my take is, is that you know, it's not what you know, or actually it's not really who you know, 
What's more important is what you know that gets you a seat at the table. And what's really maddening about trying to make connections, it's amazing how you can have one of the greatest innovations or products or services in the world. And if no one really knows about it, it's kind of a moot point. But the, the key I'm trying to really, or the point I'm really trying to hammer home here is the importance of building that, that network or social capital as the buzzword is now in the industry and building that bridge with, between the two entities, being the innovators, the people that focus on, you know, assisting those who are in need of financing and capital to get their innovation to the market. But more importantly, being able to close the deal, meaning that you tell that story about what you're trying to accomplish. I hear a lot of great stories here as a visual storyteller myself with a broadcast journalism background, also print too. I realize the importance of what we're trying to do here. So once again, thanks to Mark and Luke and everyone here who has been willing to share their time and experience and what they're doing. I look forward to connecting with all of you. And if I could be a support multiplier in your endeavors, please reach out to me. Thanks. So just real quick, what Al has is he's got the customers in the government that are interested. And it's basically a mobile hospital type of a set up and nobody's doing it the way that the government wants and the, since the customers are there he needs the money to build it so he can sell it so anyways i was gonna just throw that in let's move on to um our next gentleman whose name i will for sure mispronounce uh fires i'm sorry uh, in advance <laughs> no problem mark thank you thank you for this fantastic opportunity can you hear me well Yes, you're a little yes, you're a little low volume, but yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, I but try I, to speak louder. I'm sorry okay. about. Uh, I don't know why the volume is low, but I I will speak louder. So yeah, uh, my company is K Medical, and I'm the founder and CEO of K Medical. K Medical is focused on bringing uh, a new mattress, a compliant mechanism based mattress, which is uh, innovation for. Um, uh, that uh, that comes from MIT, and uh, I, I have partnered with UCLA for this exciting technology, and uh, we are coming up uh, with a mattress that will prevent bed sores, um, uh, technically known as pressure ulcers. And uh, we are working on this exciting technology through STTR. We are funded by NIH STTR, which is a, which is a tech transfer project, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we are very close to, uh, I, I, my fingers are still crossed and we hope that we make it, but uh, we are very close to being awarded the phase two. So we are looking forward to it. And uh, uh, this, uh, this technology has been filed, uh, for, uh, filed in, uh, in the US for, for, for its patents and also in Europe. And as you can imagine, this is a fantastic um, uh, uh, opportunity and uh, uh, there is uh, there is a um, l there is a huge need. Sixty thousand patients in the U.S. die every year as a direct result of bed sores um, alone, and uh, we are here to solve this problem. and And this technology. Um, Todd, uh, what about this point? What type of a uh, sorry? I had some disturbance. Look at him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What type of a talk are you going to give? I don't know where you got somebody that's on the. <laughs> and I adore people, and that's all they do. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry there. I, I, I muted everybody because I didn't know who to choose of the 90 people here, however, all the way down to 75. The, sh the event is definitely wearing on just a bit, but I want to I apologize to you for cutting you off there in the end. Please come back. Let's see if we can get your volume up because it does sound like um, solving bed sores is a fantastic thing. I hope our community can come out and support you. Let's talk to Luke next. Did, oh, is Luke going to be able to? Uh, I, you can on my on your. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Florida. How's it going? Good. Hi, I I I'm Luke. I have founded company called Amplify. It is a blockchain record label and music NFT marketplace. 
And for the rest of it, um, I wrote a song and I would like to play that. I think it describes my pitch pretty well. Cool. All right. Well, I have a guitar. <laughs> um, <clears throat> introducing Amplify. Take a small fee, we will drug you for free. We'll make some live NFTs. We're raising one million seed to fund a few employees and pay some technical fees. We'll market our MVP. So let's get started. Momentum's growing, and we really want to party with you to get you a return on your investment. So please invest. Okay, that was the most creative uh, presentation of the night, but it was hard to hear all your well, work, Luke, I gotta say. I, I'm sorry, I realized that, that's why I turned my volume down, because yeah. I, the reason I'm starting this company is I am in a rock band, and I like to play very loud, okay. um, and I like to make music NFTs, and I think I, yeah, let me know if you have that's any a, questions. That's better done in an acoustic version, Luke. <laughs> I left my acoustic at home. You're you are correct for sure. <laughs> oh, good, David. I'm glad you're you're present. Uh, yeah, be active if you if that would be great. Okay, we're gonna move on though because I actually want to get through everybody that would like to speak tonight. And one of my favorite people is here, Igor, who's a few people away, and I want him to be, have a chance to pitch you all shortly. So thank you, Luke. We're going to move on to, and now I'm, your name is going to be tough on me, uh, Abba Halish. Sorry, I know I did that wrong. Please tell us what your name really is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hi, hi Mas. Uh, my name is Abhilas Gupta. I'm founder of uh, Globax Goods Impact Solutions. Uh, I'm basically from India, and uh, we are already uh, converged in 2016 in some of the business relations. So that's uh, my project is a uh, is a uh, one of the that is a good organic farming business. So I am also working in the export and contract farming in a, with the different of agencies uh, in India. But uh, my uh, main concern is now the problem is there is uh, about 43 millions of the farmer here in working in an organic structure. But there is a government and there is a no private sector is allowed to uh, provide a good marketplace here in India. So I want to some of the investors, some of the grants, some of the fund from the, in this uh, panels, this is the, uh, the, this is the platform because I want to the work with the, some of the marketplace, internet based and supply chain physically managed. That is a structure for the, our farmers of 43 billions that uh, help for the good pricing of their organic produce as well as to others, the other sector of the like digital agriculture sector, because in India, the farmer has very, very old structuring and the, the, the metallurgy used for the cultivation practices. Now, climate is a certainly change is now, and the every times the heavy rains falls or the, there is a, the, you know, um, there is a high uh, cold or the high is the, the, the hot temperatures. So farmer has a, facing a lot of the problem. So my request to all of these, if you support the small funding for me so that I can start my the one of the good, uh, that the dream is there to, to create a good marketplace for the Indian agriculture system, for the, especially for the organic uh, uh, growers, that is the 43 millions, but the government have no structure there. There is a no platform to buy that is uh, produced. I'm also, also engaged in the exporting also. So I export to the different country that is a good organic and natural food to supply to the different countries also. So that is my uh, small uh, pitch check. So thank you for all of, all of you. Thank you for coming. And uh, I think we would need to learn a lot more about your project, but uh, please keep coming back so we can learn more about you too. Um, next up is uh, Anun. Mark, you should know that better. Arun, I'm sorry, small type. You're right, I should, and thank you for coming back. <laughs> despite hey, my lack thanks. of being able, to, despite my butchering your name, <laughs> thank you for coming back. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mark. Thanks for uh, uh, this platform, uh, very useful. 
Uh, my name is Arun Ayer. I'm a technologist with three decades of experience in the optical technology. I'm the founder, CTO, and I present CEO of Avarice Technologies. And Avarice Technologies has two branches. It has a semiconductor branch and a medical device branch. Uh, in the semiconductor branch, we are in the so-called uh, more than more advanced packaging space, which enables uh, you know, heterogeneous chiplet manufacturing. Uh, we are close to getting a half a million dollar funding for our prototype and are looking for $3 million for manufacture, manufacturing scale up. Uh, we have one patent allowed and two patents are in the pipeline. Uh, on the medical side, we are developing a non-invasive continuous glucose monitor that is consumable free. Uh, so it's like a one-time investment and after several, few, like two, three years later, you had to change the light source. Uh, we have done a proof of concept desktop work looking for 500K for developing uh, in vivo mobile device. It will be a wearable. Before the wearable, it will be a mobile, like a little mouse-like uh, size uh, device. Um, we are, um, um, uh, when, we, when it turns into a wearable and for FDA, we are looking for about 5 million. Uh, before that, of course, 500K is what we are targeting for in seed funding now. We have two patents issued and some more in the pipeline. The ultimate aim is to make this device cheap enough that it can be uh, used in developing countries where they don't have the infrastructure for blood analysis of glucose uh, you know, uh, detection. So it can be put in, in, a, in a senior citizen center or in a, even a restaurant so people can go and get a reading very quickly about their uh, blood level. So hoping that uh, with uh, so much uh, uh, glucose, you know, diabetes, uh, diabetics in, in the world, this will be a very valuable uh, addition to the uh, medical device world. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And let's move on to Igor, who I just want everybody to know, I am making a major effort to help Igor and his company and all my investor friends who are here, please listen. And if Igor needs a little assistance, I may add a sentence or two. Go ahead, Igor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mark. And thank you, everyone. So I'm a founder and CEO of company Pythera Therapeutics. We're based uh, in California. And we want to solve the problem of metastatic cancer. I'm a former faculty, former director of R&D of clinical stage company. Um, we learned recently uh, about the clinic in Central Asian country that has been practicing herbal um, medication, so-called botanical drug, for over 30 years. And we, we, we're developing this drug further in the U.S. We call it MedFight. So the drug is very efficacious uh, in, in our hands. Uh, our R&D team tested it for the past several months and we further improved this drug. Uh, we call it MedFight Plus. So what, uh, this is a botanical drug and FD, US FDA has a clear path for uh, IND and clinical trial of those bot this botanical drug. So we were, we're seeking funding to take this uh, drug through um, uh, IND approval in the US and then into phase one, two clinical trial, and then to either partner with Big Pharma or license out. Uh, we have additional ideas. The drug is very efficacious and it's uh, and safe. And critically, we do have uh, data in people uh, from Central Asia. So that's a pretty unique case. The way we administer this drug is right now is simply through the drink. Just you, you put a few drops and you drink. So uh, there are many ways. Uh, there are many ways to improve it. Um, I have 30 years uh, experience in uh, biology, of course, running R&D teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right now, we're seeking funding to take this drug uh, through a uh, U.S. Uh, IND approval process, uh, and we want to leverage our data uh, in people um, and also our data in, uh, from our R&D team in San Leandro that show that this drug indeed is very efficacious at killing very difficult to kill uh, metastatic cancer, such as breast cancer, um, bone cancer, and uh, brain cancer. I'm human molecular geneticist by degree, and uh, I can confirm that th there, there are some really good ideas behind this botanical drug. It's not just botanical drug, it's not just herbal medication, it's a, it's a collection of small molecules, inhibitors. And if you remember 1995, 96, 
uh, HIV was called non-treatable. And then there was a cocktail of uh, protease inhibitors in, uh, invented. And it totally changed the way how we treat HIV. So we want to achieve the same thing uh, for treatment of metastatic cancer. So here's my pitch. We need $5 million to take this drug through a uh, US uh, IND approval and to into phase one, two clinical trial and partner alliances. So please join us. We need funding. And I just want to say, I'm going to go find this money for this because there are 600 adults that have been treated by this already. And many of them were given two to three months to live. And now they, some of them have lived 15, 18 years and this has been developed in a country that, you know, is an obscure nation. In a, in a, but whoever figured it out, you know, kudos to them. And Igor comes out of six years at the National Institute of Health and a lot of other things. And he discovered this with his team. And this is really, in my opinion, the cure to cancer. But we've got to go through all the FDA approval stages. Even though it's been proven on humans, we can't really necessarily use those as our human trial. So we're starting a journey. And if anybody is uh, impacted by mm -hmm. cancer and wants to solve cancer like I want to, please circle back with me personally or Igor, and we would like to talk to you. We have to move on. Thank you, Igor, for the presentation. We're going to be running probably 10 or 15 minutes behind when I wanted to end. I hope everybody's okay with that. Let's just keep going because I want everybody to have a chance who wants to speak to speak because this is all about networking and people seeing each other, getting to know their faces and, and feeling comfortable to do business with each other in time. So we're going to move on to Crystal. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much for hosting this. This is an amazing event. So many wonderful people with so many wonderful ideas. Um, let me give you a little bit about me. So I uh, I come from an academic background uh, that I started when I was 13 years old. And uh, I finished my first master's at London, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine when I was 19. I went on to do my PhD at Columbia University Medical Center. Um, and I had a, a prestigious career in uh, molecular microbiology. Um, I'm an expert in RNA biochemistry, um, molecular uh, genetics. And uh, after that, I went on into consulting, um, primarily for angel investors. And I've worked in incubators. I've worked uh, with startups and for startups primarily in the pre-seed, seed, and reg, and, uh, like reg A to, to B rounds. So that's a little bit about me. Okay, so that's, that's I, I'm coming at this from a consultant mindset. And I have so many questions for so many people, but just to keep this brief, I have to choose, like I have questions for Scott Moffat, for Adelman, for uh, Marion, it's funny. Um, and my question was going to be for, um, sorry, Bamadali Ali, but I guess Lima just, uh, sorry, knocked, knocked you out of the league, <laughs> knocked, knocked you down that, that peg. Oh, and then also um, Igor, that was a great pitch. Um, I guess it's amazing technology. I'm speaking both from you know, speaking from the head of a consultant who does due diligence, who is in the uh, the space of, of competitive landscape, but also as a microbiologist and a woman who also hates pap spears, um, my question to you is this. There are approximately 130 strains of HPV, um, something between 14 and 16 are oncogenic. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how your test does with cross reactivity? I'm assuming that this is an antigen based test. And your and, assumption is wrong. <laughs> but oh, I can explain. <laughs> oh, I would love to learn more about how it works. This is just, sure. this is any, anything yep. that I can keep getting another pap smear. It's um, fascinating to me. I'm happy to connect and tell you more, but it is not antigen based and it's not ELISA. It's it's even better, um, and we are using literally uh, what's novel about the synthetic biology field um, to make it happen. So that's 
that explains why we have such high sensitivity and specificity as well. That's awesome. I think that just because of time, Crystal, if there's a list of people that you need to be connected to and you weren't able to find them in the chat, just reach out to me and I'll make sure that you are connected to everybody that you are interested in because this entire event is about connecting. Yeah, and you can offline, you know, individually, you know, get in phone conversations or Zooms with everybody so you can dive deeper. They all need angel investors. So it'd be great if you would like to jump in and help out in you know, any way that you can, any wisdom you can bring, it sounds fantastic. But just because of timing, I'm gonna keep moving on. If you, and come back again. Um, Preston, you're up next. All right, what's going on everybody? My name is Preston Harris from VIP Socio. Um, I'm gonna put together a little scenario for you. Let's say my man Luke wants to put on an event, an event for all his artists. And he puts his event on Eventbrite and he starts selling tickets. But while he's selling tickets, he has some expenses that come up and he doesn't know how he's going to pay those expenses while he's getting ready to put on his event. Well, he should have used VIP Socio because VIP Socio is the event platform that you use that gives you instant payouts for your events. And the cool thing about VIP Socio is it also has a marketplace attached to it. So we're basically like Eventbrite times Amazon. So we have a, we have um, companies from all over the world. We have over 60 companies in Africa who use our platform. We have companies in India and we're in Europe. We're all over the United States, but we are the platform that gives you instant payouts, that gives you all the marketing materials and gives you that additional promotion for your event. So that way you can rock the house and make sure that your event goes smoothly and without um, any um, hassles and you get your money right away. If you look at Ticketmaster, if you look at um, Eventbrite, it's going to take you seven days to get your money on Ticketmaster. It's going to take you five days to get your money on Eventbrite. With VIP Socio, you sell a ticket, you sell a product, you get your money instantly. And we have a, a network of over 600,000 that we will shoot an email blast for so you can get your event promoted. Right now, we're getting ready for our Series A here in September. We're looking to raise 5 million so that way we can grow our team. We have 10 people who have been bootstrapping it so far. And now it is time for us to hit the market running through Christmas time. So we'd love to have anybody who's interested in being a part um, of the Global Culture Hub to come check us out at VIPSocio.com. That's V-I-P-S-O-C-I-O.com. Mark, thanks for setting this up. It's great. This is my second time on the call. Last week was great. And uh, I got to check connect with John, who's getting ready to talk. John's awesome, so check out what he's doing. But um, we're coming to the market and we're coming heavy. We have a show that's gonna be um, a QVC type show for our, our platform called Visit VIP Socio that will be launching on XOD Network. Make sure you go download that. It's a free network and you can go see the products and services that our entrepreneurs provide on our platform. So if you're a small business, you're an event promoter and you wanna get your name out there, you wanna get your products out there, go to VIPSocio.com. It's free to sign up. It's free to share your products. And we'd love to share um, and help you build and grow your business. Thank you, Preston. Very good. I think you did better this week. <laughs> but anyways, good at for you. Okay, we're going to go on to Tisha. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So my name is Tisha Cable. I am the CEO of C-Model. We are a decision intelligence company. And so we help CEOs to find the truth uh, in their data. Sorry, my house is loud all of a sudden. It's been super quiet. Um, so we help CEOs to find the truth in their data so that they can actually grow uh, with confidence. So the problem that we solve is that repeatable growth is usually an outcome of uh, decision making. And most decision models and companies are broken because data is truly underanalyzed. So you might see, uh, you have CRMs nowadays, you have um, uh, business intelligence tools, but what you only have, what you don't have in terms of the decision intelligence space are uh, prescriptive analytics truly coming out uh, of data. And most people can't compile all of the data fast enough to use it uh, in a timely fashion to make a decision. So we come in uh, with our SaaS tool and, and solve that problem. So this is, it's built on about 20 years experience modeling projecting, forecasting uh, data across uh, the growth spectrum. So that's both the data uh, dollars in and the dollars out. We've tailored our tools towards CEOs because in my experience, um, it's CEOs who end up uh, with 
charts and graphs and bits of information that they can't do anything with in most cases and then call people like me in um, and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to get those problems uh, mitigated. So we are currently about three weeks away from opening a pre-seed round of about $1.5 uh, million. We have customers and revenue uh, at this time. Um, we're, we're in market. Uh, but still in a very early stage. We have a human analytics um, machine learning hybrid model, which is the future, by the way. Um, so we'll be uh, looking to speak to anyone who's interested in sort of coming into this space and building, building the future, and certainly always interested in talking to people who have this problem uh, to be solved, including early stage founders uh, who wanna avoid being a part of the 90% that fail because they have the inability to plan uh, accurately. Well said and impressive. Please come back. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. And we're going to move on. John, nice to see you again. I really like your project a lot. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Mark. And great job, uh, Tisha and Preston. Got that speech down quick this time. Um, my name's uh, John Carreri. I'm CEO and founder of a company called Energy Cloud. I'm a technologist. I've uh, been doing internet businesses for the last 30 years, created jobs.com, uh, acquired by monsterjokes.com, acquired by Viacom. I've been really focused on the built environment for the last 14 years in optimizing buildings uh, for saving energy, water, conservation of resources, and our health tech company right now, our main product's Hummingbird, which purifies the air and it immediately deactivates COVID-19 in the air instantly. It was proven at USC Keck School of Medicine um, our efficacy won an Edison Award. So I'll do a little, little prop show there with our little Edison Award that we won. Um, so we have hard science to prove that efficacy. And the short one-liner for our company is we're the vaccine for the air. Um, so comp competitively, ours instantly kills COVID-19. The competition's at 30 to 60 minutes. Um, we also are a very data-driven company. So we have an indoor air quality monitor. You probably can't see all of the detail of that but has eight different levels of measurement in the air quality. And then at the same time, our little hummingbird systems that you can see here in the back, this is the hummingbird, actually in duct unit. And it also breaks down VOCs and other pollutants in our environment. So every single building needs a hummingbird. Um, it cleans up all of the problems with the air and it's scalable to any size commercial building. And we could go on, but there's a, the trillion dollar asset class of commercial buildings really needs to solve the problem of getting employees back in their buildings. We've got that solution. We're raising a series A of 8 million at a 32 million uh, pre-money valuation and uh, happy to talk with anyone as well as entrepreneurs to happy to help you with um, any technology direction and things, questions you might have about your startup as well. Thanks, Mark. Uh, you're so impressive, and I really always like hearing what you're doing, and it's just great to hear it again. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Back. Phil, sorry I didn't get you in earlier. You're one of the longer distance, you know, folks. I, you're in Singapore. Is that where you're from? I can't, I can't recall, but I remember it's a time zone difference. Yeah, I just unmuted. I'm glad I... Um... I got on the floor because uh, I'm currently based in Seoul, South Korea. And I stretched between uh, South Korea and the US. So um, I'm, uh, my name is Philia. I'm the founder of NCT of Syncolux. We are currently based in Seoul in close partnership with the state of our nanotechnology centers in this area. And over the past decades, as a scientist, I have spearheaded research and development projects at the US National Laboratories. And Synchronous is a spin-off where a star company sprung out of the technologies built in the U.S. National Labs. Our company is specialized in uh, semiconductor sensors. It's a custom design based on the semiconductor and nanotechnologies. At the same time, it is an intellectual property holding company for innovative ideas I have come up with. With the established technologies, I have invented the ultra-sensitive X-ray sensors having 600 nanometer sensitivity. This sensitivity is equal to a 200th of a strand of a human hair's thickness. And this sensitivity has already experimentally demonstrated. And the results were published at one of the nature journals. So I'll put the, uh, the, the open access link to in the chat box. So you can take a look later. And then semiconductor image, you can see on the left, 
of the screen, the one I the prototype before, it's a 32 segmented um, sensitive the, the sensors. And this instrument is indispensable for conducting research in COVID, cancer, and material sciences all around the globe. So to fulfill ever rising needs and to make this technology even more appealing to the global market, we are bringing this invention to a whole new height by boosting its performance and capability through upgrading plants. So upon upgrading, our custom sensor have no eco on the global market. So the first prototype was uh, already patent protected. The new sensor will follow the suit. So what makes Synchronux one of a kind and best in class in this business? And first and foremost, is the rapid development process. It usually takes several years to complete the, uh, the prototype. So in our case, over a period of six months, we can complete the prototype process. So what makes this possible? It's because our proven technologies and uh, streamlined and optimized processing. So this means that we can ensure a fast turnaround time and a shortened process of bringing our technology to the global market. So we are actively raising 500K and more in fundraising. So if we have a funding right now, we can start um, generating a streamline, streams of revenues next year, early next year. Secondly, we work with our investors so we can keep the investors up to date on our progress on a regular base, uh, basis via Zoom or a dedicated website. So our company website and my LinkedIn page and my email address is already put in the chat box. I can put, it, put them back in there. So that's pretty much it for today. And thank you for listening. I look forward to chatting with you at the breakout room, if there's any. We're not gonna do break breakout rooms tonight because it's just too long of an event. But Phil, that was very interesting. And I, I'm so glad that you made it through and hung in there till the <laughs> end. I have a feeling you'll find some interest among our community. So keep on coming back. It was right. an impressive sound. The, the so market much. market is already formed. It's uh, over two, 20 million. Awesome. Well, I, I look forward personally to learning more, and I'm sure there's others in our community that will we'll try and get you in a little earlier next time. I, uh, sorry right. that you were towards the end. I know that was a challenge on your time zone. But we're going to move on because I've kept everybody here almost two a little over two hours, and I really wanted to make this a two-hour networking event. So, Jonathan, you're going to be our last person who's going to speak tonight, and then I'll just have closing remarks, and we'll finish up. Thank you. Hello, how's it going? My name is Jonathan. I'm the CEO of Flex Holdings. And what I do is basically I'm an economist. I'm a graduate from an economy degree. And not only that, I actually, you know, help out startups. I help out investors seek for real investments. And, you know, like most people, especially in the startup business, it's hard for them to keep track over 10 years. Most startups don't even succeed over 10 years, not even 10 years exact. So, you know, it's better to keep the investors rolling, being happy into the right, you know, companies they're actually seeking for because they're looking to make some money at the same time, help out other people. Uh, not only that, I actually deal with, you know, stocks, bonds, stuff like that. I could always do that on the side, but I like being more so helping out the investor side and startup, you know, I like helping people. So if you have any choices, if you, if you want to come to me, have a one-on-one -on -one chat on what else I do, please reach out and then we'll definitely help you out. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, short and sweet and to the point, I love that. Okay, so to everybody who's stuck around to the very end, I want to thank you so much. You know, the community that I'm trying to build, this is all going to be based on you all helping me build it. Um, we pretty much doubled the size of attendance from last week to this week, which is a good sign. If any of you would like to volunteer to invite your network to come and also, you know, maybe uh, check us out next week, please do and help uh, help me out. I can, you know, I'm trying, I can only, I have 28,000 followers, but I can only send an invite to a thousand of them every week. So the vast majority of the people that I even know don't even know I'm doing this yet. And so I, this needs to sort of build on leverage with everybody's help. 
it's, this community isn't just for me. I mean, I'm doing this for free, and this is because I instinctively believe this is what we as a startup ecosystem need right now, more networking opportunities like this. I'm open to suggestions how we structure them, the formats. I know that everybody has different ideas. We might even um, have other people lead the evening, so it's not just me as the only moderator of this organization, or, or not, well, community, I guess I want to say. But please stay engaged. Come back each week if you can. And um, thank you again for uh, making this a success. And I look forward to seeing all of you again next week, if you can. Goodbye, Dell. Thank you. Bye-bye.